Yo, what's up, buddy? My name is Miyakon. We're back playing more in Asisu. Alright. There is this place, kind of like a lounge, at one side of the corridor, across from the nurse's station. This generally deserted place held a, f held a few couches and chairs, as well as a large TV. Stupid programs commemorating the new year were still being broadcast on the 28-inch screen. And there was a girl who looked absolutely bored watching that absolutely boring TV. Short, in pink pajamas, a white bracelet on her wrist, just like mine. Impressively long hair that almost reached down to her hips. Hey, do you find that interesting? There was no deep purpose in the asking. Simply, I had nothing else to do, so I started talking to her. Not really. Was her only reply to me. She didn't turn to face me at all. She kept looking on with boredom at that TV as if I didn't even exist. Then don't watch it. Even as I thought this, I sat down in a chair next to her. And side by side we watched TV. Nothing else to do. Nothing we could do. So we sat there, silently, and watched TV. New Year's celebration programs, as per usual. A useless array of comedians and oddities. And every so often, the MC's stupid, shrill laughter resoundingly dry, resounding dryly in this white, sun-drenched lounge. Say, tell me. The girl suddenly started talking to me, but her eyes were, as, were, as always, glued to the TV. How many times is it for you now? What do you mean by that? How many times have you come here? To seven up? S sorry, I have no clue what you're talking about. I see. So, it's your first time then? So she'd see my confusion about her question and come to the right conclusion. Then since no one's around, and since it's my duty... Duty? There's this rule. Not in slightly, she explained that the rule was that someone here on 7F to tell newcomers the truth. I knew nothing. I understood even less. And as if I did not even exist, she slowly started her speech. Then listen closely. Dot dot dot. Space. Dot dot dot. Her words spoken methodically. One by one, were a little different from all the ones I'd heard from the doctors about this place. And their business-like, crisp syntaxes, they told me, this is a place where one awaits for med medical advances. This is a place where one heals one's heart. And perhaps they might even have been correct in a general sense. But according to the girl, that was just a party line. The truth was that this 7F was the only place in the hospital where medical treatments did not take place. This was just a place where you waited for your life to come to an end. Those are her words to me. I thought so as well. I'd felt it even before she'd spoken. See, this is my second time. Second time doing what? coming here. And then she explained to me. But nobody on 7F stayed here from initial hospitalization all the way until death. While there was zero possibility of being cured, you were sent home if your condition was stable. But if it worsened again, you would be returned here. That cycle ended only in death. 
whether it was at home or here on 7F, always one of the two, we were going to die. No way to escape it, it seemed. With that meaning permi permitting her every word, she informed, informed me that this was her second time up here. I'm only going to say this once. So, listen closely now. She continued speaking, all the while staring at that blank TV screen. This was an idle chit chat about when lights out, what when light, when lights out was, or where the kitchen was, or anything like that. This was something completely different. The third time you're discharged here, resign yourself. There won't be a fourth time. You'll never go home again. If you ever want to escape, head towards the B station, not the A station. Eat nothing. That's the simplest shortcut. You leave the smallest burden on your family that way. It was, as if she was it was as if she was packed to the room with matters like those. This was probably an oral tradition, relevant only to those who were going to die, and kept by those who came here for that purpose. So, is this the duty you were talking about? Yeah, that's right. So do you remember to perform it for a newcomer yourself someday, okay? With those words, she slowly stood up. She casually tossed her long hair and grazed my nose. And I have to go measure my temperature, so... Then she turned her back and started walking down the corridor. Now completely deserted, save for me. The lounge held only the laughter from the TV and the white flowers by the windowsill. In the end, she didn't even look at me once. Alright, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like, fave, comment, do whatever you like doing. I'll see you next time on episode I make. This series. As I will say in every episode, it's dedicated to, dedicated to my girlfriend, Jomi Mango, aka Mango, 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 I like the soup. Anyway, stay cute, stay awesome, stay flappy, kids. Meow.